In this video, we're going to introduce a new state function, enthalpy. And to begin, I want to start by laying out a very common and pretty straightforward, at least on the surface, situation in chemistry. We're running a chemical reaction in a beaker, open to the air, at a constant pressure of one atmosphere and perhaps in solution. So we've got, say, water is the solvent and the reactants, and as the reaction proceeds, some of the products are dissolved in this solution, much smaller mole fraction than the solvent molecules, of course. This is a very common situation for a chemical reaction. And thermodynamically, where we should start, or one thing we should think about is, how does the first law apply to this situation? Well, let's write out the first law. Delta U is equal to the sum of Q plus W. Delta U being the change in internal energy of the reacting molecules, reactant and product molecules, is the sum of the heat released or absorbed by those molecules and the work done on or by those molecules. Now, if the system changes in volume, then the reacting molecules will have done some work. And we can calculate that work because we're in a constant pressure situation of one atmosphere or whatever the pressure may be, we can calculate the work term as negative P times a change in volume as the chemical reaction takes place. What's interesting now about this is that we can recognize, let me actually use blue, that we have a state function here and a state function here and only one path function remaining in this equation, delta U equals Q minus P delta V. So we can collect all of the state function terms or the changes in state functions on one side, delta U plus P delta V, and the only remaining path dependent function Q on the right hand side. So this is interesting. What this says is that when we run a, a chemical reaction at constant pressure, what appears to be a path dependent function, the heat transfer, is actually just a state function, the change in internal energy plus pressure times the change in volume. And at constant pressure, this entire delta U plus P delta V is equal to the change in a new state function that we can define called H, or enthalpy, where we're defining the enthalpy. This is a definition now as the internal energy plus the pressure times the volume. So what this little derivation has arrived at is the idea that when a chemical system goes from state one to state two via the operation of a chemical reaction occurring at constant pressure, and that's key to this analysis, and this is very common, right? Anything open to the air is gonna be constant pressure at one atmosphere. Anytime we're in that situation, the heat released or absorbed by the reacting components, really just to be careful here, we should add Q reaction on all of these. I'll just do that in the first equation and in the last equation here. Q reaction is equal to the change in enthalpy delta H. So if we use calorimetry, for example, to measure Q reaction, we have this change in the state function enthalpy. And as we see in the center of the slide, enthalpy is defined as the sum of two terms, the internal energy U and pressure times volume, P times V. Pressure times volume is an energy unit. We actually saw that in the section on expansion work. So adding internal energy and pressure times volume makes sense in terms of units. And what we derived up here is that if we run a reaction or any other process, actually, not just a chemical reaction, any process, at constant pressure, the heat absorbed or released by the system in the course of that process is equal to the change in enthalpy, delta H. Exothermic processes have negative delta H, and we can relate this back to QP, the heat transfer, right? QP is also negative since delta H is equal to QP for the constant pressure process. Endothermic processes have delta H greater than zero, and this again relates to QP or what we called Q reaction up here having a positive value as well. We 
commonly think in terms of delta H rather than the heats because delta H is a bit more of a generalizable value. For one thing, it is a state function, and that is worth emphasizing that delta H here is a state variable, really a change in a state variable. H itself is a state variable. That means it's characteristic of the state of the system, and on some level, as we'll see a little bit later on, that means that enthalpy is transferable. We can use it for additional calculations in ways that we wouldn't be able to if we were dealing with path variables. We'll dig into that when we talk about Hess's law a little bit later. Now, given that enthalpy is associated with a state, we can think of enthalpy as showing up on one side or the other of a chemical equation. If, for example, a reaction is endothermic, maybe we have more heat on the reactant side or enthalpy on the reactant side that needs to be input as the reaction occurs. A thermochemical equation incorporates the enthalpy change of a reaction as well as the balanced chemical equation, including the reactants, products, and phases. And so any thermochemical, thermochemical equation, heat will show up as a reactant or a product, or you may see a delta H value listed with the thermochemical equation. So for example, here's a description of a reaction. Let's write a thermochemical equation for this. We have equal numbers of moles of HCl and NaOH, and these react to form NaCl and H2O, a reaction we've actually seen before. We can write a balanced chemical equation for this process just to start things off, and this is a good way to start writing thermochemical equations. Let's just get the balanced molecular equation down. All the reactants and products are given, and in fact, their stoichiometric ratios are given. Everything's one to one to one to one. In deciding how to write the thermochemical equation, we can proceed in one of two ways we can tack on a delta H value, or we can incorporate the heat produced or consumed on either the product or reactant side, respectively. What the problem tells us is that 2.9 kilojoules of heat are produced in this reaction. Really quickly, pause the video. Is this an exothermic or endothermic reaction? What this statement is telling us is that this is an exothermic reaction. The reacting components release heat, or as it's stated here, heat is produced. Because heat is produced in the thermochemical equation, the heat appears on the product's side, plus 2.9 kilojoules over here. For an endothermic process, heat would appear as a reactant on the left-hand side of the thermochemical equation. We may also see the heat component written as a delta H value, often after a comma or separated from the balanced chemical equation. And here, because we're dealing with an exothermic process, the sign of delta H is negative, the heat is negative, and so delta H is negative 2.9 kilojoules. You may see this written as well, and it's really just another form of the thermochemical equation. Of course, if the reaction were endothermic, this value would be positive, and again, the magnitude of the heat would appear as a positive number on the left-hand side of the chemical equation rather than the right-hand side. 